Hi guys, it is another gray and gloomy day <clears throat> here in the end times. It is Sunday morning. It is July 18th, 2021. It is 61 degrees, 61 degrees here on July 18th at Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, where we have made it through our third flash flood watch of the past seven days. So I'm up here figuring out what to do with my day. Thumbing through the mainstream media, guys. <clears throat> I'm just going to dive right into it. <clears throat> it's Yahoo News this morning. Without a trace of irony, apparently. <clears throat> After six and a half hours of deliberations, a Colorado jury on Friday found Mark Redwine guilty of second degree, second degree murder <clears throat> for killing his 13 year old son, Dylan, in a fit of rage after the boy found photos of his father wearing a red bra and eating feces from a diaper. Oops, that was the, that was the wrong story. <clears throat> That's not the story I came here to tell you about. But uh, right here in the mainstream media from the Daily Beast, but anyway, we're going to go from the daily feces-eating beast. <clears throat> okay, is this the right story? Yes. <clears throat> We're going to go over to the Telegraph today, which I think is out of London or somewhere. Again, as far as I can tell, guys, there is not one trace of irony in this story. Uh, there is... Probably nothing I can add to this story if anybody does not understand why this story is the we are so fucked headline of the day. Obviously, I've been having a failure to communicate for the past 12 years. Take it away, the telegraph. <clears throat> Out of this world, why humans could one day be living on other planets. Ah shit, the bullshit detector button is out in the tiny house and I'm not going to get it. <clears throat> All right. DNA editing could allow humans to live on new planets within the next 500 years. A genetic engineering expert who has worked with NASA has suggested. Chris Mason, a professor of physiology and biophysics at Whale Cornell Medical College in New York, argues that technological advances could one day, sometime in the next 500 years, allow humans to engineer their bodies to survive extraterrestrial conditions. Hmm. Mason outlined a detailed plan for how the human race could settle on potentially hundreds of exoplanets when Earth is no longer able to sustain life. Well, of course, we, we've, we've hit a contradiction, Professor Mason. Uh, so, it's going to take humans 500 years to figure out how to genetically alter our own biology to live on all of these exoplanets, which kind of implies that this planet has to be habitable for the next 500 years. Uh, I think before, you know, that little shriveled up midget, what was his name, Hawkins, before he died, uh, talking about uh, 100 years <clears throat> before the human race is extinct. I'm going to send this story out to Rotor Tiller and Realize, Realize, Real Lies. All right. He has a new book. Oh, this is a, this is basically his book tour, I guess. In his book, <clears throat> 
the next 500 years engineering life to reach new worlds, Professor Mason says the increasing size and brightness of the sun will make our planet intolerable for humans within the next billion years. We're no longer talking 500 years. So in one billion years from now, it's going to start getting a little hot around the collar for, for us humans. Uh, here on planet Earth, one billion years from now, while we're sitting around, I don't know, uh, whatever the human race is doing, one billion years from now, it's probably going to be time to start moving to exoplanets. Uh, you know, what I was doing as I was reading this, I was trying to picture the reporter. Who is the clueless moron reporter? This is Rosina Sabor. Uh, Rosina Sabor actually uh, I, I, it doesn't look like she actually interviewed Professor Mason where when he was I, I guess she just read the book uh, where this man is suggesting not only that humans are going to be around in 500 years, but one billion years that, that humans. So we have been around for, we're going to call it 200,000 years, you know, just as a rough yardstick in, in, you know, these biologists claim an average species is on this planet for about one million years. So we are, let's call it 20%, somewhere between 20 and 30% of the way through our one million year stint uh, on the planet. Uh, we have such a successful invasive species, we have made it 20 to 30 percent of our assigned time on this planet as a species, but uh, what is a billion? Is it 1,000 million years? All right. So we're going to hear from Professor Mason, yes, talking about how the increasing size and brightness of the sun will make it intolerable for us in a, in a billion years. Quote, <clears throat> this means we cannot stay here forever, as wonderful as it is. At some point, we will have to go. Yes. Uh, arguing that genetic engineering of the of humanity is a quote duty we have not only to ourselves but to all creatures close quote to ensure the survival of life so I, I, I I'm, I'm reading into this that we're going to take all of our fellow Earthlings that uh, still are sharing this planet with us is somewhere between 500 and 1 billion years from now. I guess what he's saying by that comment is, uh, yeah, we'll just take all of our other fellow, fellow Earthlings. We're also going to genetically engineer every other species of Earthling. We're going to throw them on the spaceship with us and head off to an exoplanet. They don't pursue this uh, line of life. <clears throat> the scientist, the scientist, yes, described how DNA editing could help to address address the risks posed by space travel, as well as allow humans to tolerate extreme environments so they can safely live on other planets. He said research into the impact of space travel on astronauts' DNA had provided valuable insight in how to protect humans for future life away from our home planet. Yes, I should call in uh, Realize, Realize, Realize for a guest editorial. 
he's because I know Rob uh, is a lot more educated than I about the subject of the impact of space travel on astronauts. There's something about this pair of identical twins, one who spent a year in space. I mean, anyway, you'll have to find that elsewhere. <clears throat> All right, so how is this going to unfold? Professor Mason outlined ways in which genetic engineering could enable people to overcome the challenges that settling on another planet pose. For instance, allowing humans to produce their own amino acids or nutrients. He acknowledged that that idea, quote, raises large ethical questions, close quote, but said he could envision a time when genetically modified humans could become an entirely new species. Quote, it is an extraordinary time. We have just begun this mapping, but we already have a good list of phenomenal candidates, you know, talking about new planets for the most invasive species on this planet to get set loose in the universe. Pro Professor Mason said he anticipated that there will be many more potentially habitable planets discovered by the year 2400. Yes! He said his multi-stage proposal includes plans for what he calls a, quote, generation ship. A generation ship on which people, you know, these, these explorers would live and die on their way towards a new world. They would live their entire lifespan on a generation ship and that is actually the children of the people on the mothership that would land on the exoplanet how many light years away and they would colonize the planet. <clears throat> by the year 2500, by the year 2500, Mason believes we may be able to send out a generation ship that would chart a course for a new star and home planet. Quote, people often say to me, well, why do all this? Well, it's something we have to do. It's not just because we want to leave Earth. We want to take great care of Earth. But if you look long enough into the future, we know that nothing is perfectly stable. Close quote. Uh, this man needs to look no further than his own reflection in the mirror to find the most unstable object on the planet, and that is the brain of this clueless fucking moron uh, talking this shit. And, and apparently this was, uh, there, there was not one iota of irony uh, anywhere in this story that humans are going to be around somewhere between 500 and 1 billion years. But I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your own home planet before we're all genetically engineered. And I have to get out here on this cold, rainy day and figure out what to do with my own genetically unengineered life on my own home planet. My guys, we're going to come back. We're going to change shirts here and come back uh, over to Collapse Chronicles where we look at the question, wonder where World War III might break out? We're going to start the prediction game for World War III, but you have to come over to Collapse Chronicles for that. Bye, guys. And you have to sit through another round of dog.